Welcome to the first of uh, our many videos on this, uh, my recent acquisition, this 2009 Mercedes C200. So the purpose of the video is just to just show you around this car. So first things first, let's get it unlocked. It, it, it just come with one key. But the fob's working. I may get a, get a, a new one in the future. And oh, next it started to rain. Anyway, so unlocked it and boot release works from the fob. But we'll, we'll get back to that later on. So this is the uh, this is 2009 Mercedes C. 220 so it's got the 2.1 diesel more of which later right, let's put the uh, the key in the fob and it's showing 215,860 miles it has a six-speed manual transmission and it's got the same type of parking brake as the XC90 it's op operated by a foot pedal with a release in pretty much the same position so interior, it's actually not too bad for it, it's a mileage, it's a half leather interior and this one's a bit warm but what, you only expect that after after mileage and a bit of wear on the door there but everything's working, it's got electric windows all round uh, the, the boot release and that's working back to that and um, this one it's got it's got AMG it's got factory AMG mats and I believe these are AMG alloys yep there you go you've got, you got the AMG there so not badly specced uh, it's got electric seats front and back but you know it's only electric for the uh, for the backrest and and the height adjustment but you've got you got thigh support on both front seats there you go and just adjust that and it's also got lumbar support which you would just see there you go you have lumbar support so quite well equipped and now uh, Matt Furious driving had one of these as a daily he had a C250 <laughs> similar vintage the same uh, platform the W204 so there's a plenty of storage, a nice little storage there and a little storage there, I'm not sure what that's for, maybe put your phone in or something, I'm not sure and a little storage there yeah. controls the radio, good. dual zone climate control uh, now the stereo's actually got built in bluetooth for the phone, I don't know if it'll work for the, for the music, that'd be great I could Play my tunes off my phone. So yeah, Mercedes heat unit, uh, glove box. Uh, excuse the wiring for my dash cam. But two, two compartments in the in the glove box, presumably for the uh, the uh, AM book, which it doesn't have. Uh, as I said, dual dual zone climate control with aircon. Now the aircon, that's some that's something that doesn't work. And also the uh, the parking brake, but don't hold. But aside from those are the things I've mentioned, it's not really anything wrong with this car. There's nothing fundamentally wrong with it. It drives fine. I've put about I put about forty miles on it. I filled well, I filled it up, and um, yeah, I've just done show you, show you forty miles since I filled it up. Oh, I'm not turn off the uh, turn off the stereo. I don't want to hear the music. And. Oh, I think the rain seems to have held off. So, I'll what I'll do is I'll quickly show you around the show you around the, the business end of this car. Uh, 
And there we have it, the 2.1 litre four cylinder diesel. And it drives the rear wheels, it's a rear wheel drive. As I as I most Mercedes. And here is the, uh, the port for, for jump starting. Uh, the battery is actually located in the boot, so if you need to jump start, this is your, this is your positive terminal, and then just find a suitable earth, and it can be jump started from the front rather than having to go in the boot. And cooling system, uh, coolant. Just looking at that, and that's that's quite clean actually. For, yeah, might, might benefit from a change. But again, nothing, nothing fundamentally wrong. Uh, now, despite the mileage, it's, this car's been clearly looked after. Uh, brake flow is good, and we have a front fuse box here, and it's a, uh, it's just conventional mini blade fuses. Now some cars have the uh, small, the micro blade fuses. Our, yeah, that's our brake reservoir with a servo, servo assisted brakes, ABS pump, screen wash. Not sure what's underneath here. No, I'm not going to look in that. And uh, that says it's aircon. This is the aircon port. Uh, the wipers. I don't. I don't think they have a triangle of doom. <laughs> like I said, it started raining so we can, uh, can put that one to the test uh, for all you hub nutters so. so just turn off that and the wipers are actually located on the indicator stock you'd, you'd have a separate wiper stock so and I think it's automatic wipers but I'm not I'm not certain of that and there we go, we have no triangle of doom. So that passes the uh, the hub nut test. So it's quite easy to get a comfortable position here, the steering wheel. You can adjust it up and down and in and out, back and forth. Get a comfortable position. And I've been through the front seat, so it's time to jump into the back. Uh, before, before I do, before I jump into the back, that's a look. I'm going to have to turn this head unit back on, but I'll be able to mute it. So I'll mute it. There we go. Uh, nice little display. Unfortunately, this is just the the uh, public spec. It's only C200. You know, some have a have navigation and a, and a screen that actually pops out when you open this and you have like extra buttons on for the fire hay spec car you like heated seats and such like but like this is this is a this is a lower spec it's only c200 but your display this shows you your, your various radio stations and that's for your cd player then this is for your if your Bluetooth phone, you connect your phone via Bluetooth and you can make calls you know, completely hands-free through, through the seat. This, there's a auxiliary source. Now, I did notice somewhere, I did notice this, this auxiliary cable. So this, and I think this, I'll need to swap swap this out for a, for a USB-C because my phone's a USB-C. So I could probably be able to play music from my phone and system and that's uh, basically everything on the screen that's controlled from the head unit and mute that again but before I before I forget again I'll just show you um, the display you know it's, it's a nice display and you can you can configure this this one in the speedometer uh, I've got I've got the odometer and the, uh, the trip counter with with the time uh, and the outside temperature. It was quite mild for early November, 13 degrees Celsius. That is mild for early November in the UK, and it even shows you speed in in k's, which is, and if you're on the continent. Uh, so 
and there's all these steering wheel controls there's volume up and down you can mute it and I think that's to do with your phone your phone controls but these control your display so if you go if I press down there's me uh, me economy you know, it's like a fuel fuel consumption and you can see I've uh, I've done quite well actually to say it's mostly around town driving since because I reset it after I've filled up and I'm I'm averaging 32.7 to the gallon which is quite good in, in the uh, third it showed 38 miles with an average speed of 90 miles per hour so you click down and that's your instantaneous and I think that's that's actually your range below it you've got your you got your fuel consumption that's your that's your sort of instant one BMWs have a have the gauge below the speed or if you remember project BIM had the had the thing be you know the, the consumption thing and um, yep I believe that's yeah that's it how far I can go on the remaining fuel in the tank 489 miles so it's got quite a good range so probably got over 500 mile range on a full tank which would probably be increased depending on your driving you know, if I'm doing you know cruising up motorway I could probably get a bit more and then it just shows it just has a digital speed or if you click it down again and then you're back to your your odometer trip meter so what i'll do is i'll go through the uh, the options on this so if you click on the right button there you got trip so oops, trip click on ok no that's fine then audio so you can select your radio stations from there i'm tuned to greatest hits I'm a bit I'm a 50 something <laughs> you can change your stations by pressing up and down so go back uh, done audio now telephone there's all phone options there so go through it. next thing in menu service so it says it says there's zero messages on the display there's the tire pressure I think what tires needs a bit of air in it because it it pulls a bit under braking but I'll go I'll check the tire air pit pressure then something I've called assist plus tells me when the next service is due uh, look at tire pressure run flat indicator active I, th I think it might have tire pressure sensors I don't know but I'll just go back uh, and then we've got settings so we've got instrument cluster so I can uh, change it to from mile an hour miles an hour to kilometers an hour uh, time and date and then there's the date and you can tell the date and time I'm shooting this video 9th of November 2022 um, at 13.37 so can change the time lights now this is quite interesting one because I could uh, I can turn on it has date you can turn on the DRLs and there's a surround lighting interior lighting delay yep so there's all those options so click on vehicle automatic door locks off I can I'll turn that on so vehicle I don't think there's any no there's only option in the uh, vehicle menu convenience it says full mirrors in when locking so it's like on the me C4 Grand Picasso is when you lock, lock the card it pulls the mirrors in quite like that uh, and can reset everything to fa factory settings if I want and I think that's it yeah and those those are all the options on this on this menu right now I'm going to uh, show you around the rest of the interior and show you what the back seats are like so here I am in, in the back seat of my Mercedes now I've got the uh, driver's seat set for me and um, in, in, in the back seat it's not too bad actually a little, little bit of leg room and now I'm, I'm a I'm a tall guy I'm over six foot tall so I'm no short ass and yeah I could probably sit quite comfortably in here uh, we've got air vents in the back but nothing else no you know no power socket or anything like that and um, one of these vents is, is broken well there's a piece missing actually so I probably I'll see if I can source a replacement so that's a, another thing to add to the laundry list and 
Uh, yeah, actually, look at Edro, it's not too bad to say it's a saloon. Uh, I think somebody did a did a review and said the uh, said the Edro was wasn't that great, but it's not too bad. And we have a interior lights. So I just uh, thought of another another job I want to do: uh, upgrade all these interior lights to to LED. Just give it a bit more modern look because uh, these these cars the W two hundred four. It was uh, it was from 2017, I think it's like 2013 or 14. I can't remember exactly. And the the outer two rear seats have Isofix fittings. So if you have a you know small small children, that that's handy to know. I think I think cars did need a Isofix from from about 2009. I know I don't, think, I don't know if my Citroen had Isofix because uh, I know the Volt XC90 has Isofix but I don't think the front passenger seat has, has Isofix I just have a feel around, sorry for the okay, camera angle, I'm, uh, I'm in the back seat uh, no. no, so just two Isofix sittings there, uh, Isofix fittings so might be something to consider depending on how many children you have now on on the back here there's something called there's a top tether i'm not sure what that's for and there's a one for each each seat um, got this speaker there there's various speakers is there there's one in each door there's a couple up front probably a couple at the back so it's about eight speaker system maybe more could be even more depending on on those grills anyway so this is what the uh, the rear seat is like for comfort not too bad I'm a bit tall so if you're not as tall as me probably be comfort will be a bit better so carry on with the tour so let's open the boat and we'll have a look at what's inside so we have a, we have a warning triangle which is, seems to come uh, come as standard on Mercedes cars now you know the boat is exactly as it was when I when I picked it up yesterday. I'm not sure what that's for though. That's a high scrape that'll be handy. And in here we have all the electrics. And this is where I made an interesting discovery. Uh, I saw this, which is a towing interface, so this means it's had a tow bar at some point. And I actually did find you know, you know, a, so a socket. Seven pit socket and, and the bracket, but the the tow bar itself is is not there. So I could use this to tow the caravan. And I found out this looks. Like, I'm not sure if it's OEM or aftermarket. I'm more inclined to think it's aftermarket. But it's got rear parking sensors. So if you lift up this this boot cover, now clever little thing here. You can lift this up. And you can just hang this off off the rear lip. And it supports your your cover with a looks like a space saver. I don't know if it's a space saver. Yeah, space saver spare. Uh, the battery there, one uh, one battery, so it could jump start direct off from battery. Uh, we seem to have all all the tool kits here. And there's even some spare bulbs, which is a bit of a, a Brucey bonus. Yep, but. I'm looking to do some LED upgrades anyway. Um, it looks like a spare rear parking sensor, but I don't know if it's OE or aftermarket. I mean, it looks it looks like it come from the factory, like that, and with a spare sensor, which is quite handy. Well, no, it's, uh, it's quite clean and straight. Um, I don't think there's anything more I can say. So. That's basically the tour. Look around from the old car, as you can see, it's a straight, nice clean, nice clean and straight, no signs of you know accident damage or I certainly can't see any rust. Cause some some uh, some of the Mercedes Mercedes are sort of earlier on, so early two thousands starting to uh, suffer from the rust. But W two oh four doesn't seem to be a uh, prone to that pretty much rust free 
nice basically a nice clean straight car so i'm sure you're wondering what it's like to drive you're going to find out um I don't know if I, something I forgot to mention these are uh, these front seat belts they have, a, they have adjustments you can adjust them up and down so that's handy so just pull it pull it out just knock out a gear and if you can tell the uh, parking brake it doesn't hold so I'm gonna need to adjust that you, you just you just adjust it but the shoes because it has a it has rear disc brakes but it has separate parking brake shoes that are located inside the disc you know the, the you know the central part of the disc is like a drum for the uh, parking brake shoes and you just need to adjust the wheel cylinder to, uh, to adjust the brake so anyway start it up and we'll set off on nothing coming and the sun's coming out so done the ray bands on the, the wipers it's automatic wipers it's got automatic headlights as well with the uh, front and rear fog lights uh, it dry, drives absolutely fine goes through the gears no problem No uh, untoward, untoward noises. You know, no whining, no, no knocks. But I think the suspension is a is a quite quite you know quite a bit stiff. You know, it's, you know, it's got. I don't know if it uh, come with the factory with the AMG parts. But I think uh, I think it might might have uh, the uh, suspension. You know, it's a it's a, it's a bit. A stiff suspension, but it's a you know, it's a saloon car or sedan for our American cousins, so it doesn't seem to handle speed bumps and potholes too well, unfortunately. Never played in them in, in this neck of the woods, but I'll just, I'll just show you what, what the brake, what the brakes are like. Try the brakes. Yes, and there's a bit of a pull to the right. I think it's just low tyre pressures. So I'll I'll get them checked, and that that should sort it. Because I, I did have I did have that problem with the uh, with, with Project Bimmer when I, when I put it back into daily use. And you know, doing all tyre pressures. Uh, yeah, def definitely pulled to the right. There's nothing mechanically wrong. So I'm confident, and that like says the the right front tire does look a bit low. So I'll get get the tire pressures pressures checked, and then we should be good. Yeah, perfect, perfect car for for long distance cruise. I think it'd be ideal, such as when we're going to the static and at a pinch you could probably probably tow tow our touring caravan i'm sure it's up to it it's got it's got a slightly bigger engine than the citroen and it's a it'll be much lighter than the citroen so maybe maybe not i don't know i don't, I don't know the curb weight of the w204 i'm sure it's no light weight but you know, you know a lot of people said that the quality, you feel the quality of the interior, the plastics, the, it's a really well built car, no, no creaks, it, and even after 215,000 miles it still feels, you know, feels like a fairly new car, but, which is basically a testament to the Mercedes build quality. So, anyway, Enough of my rambling, and we'll carry on when I get home. A few things I forgot to mention. Now this display, this has this cover on, which is quite handy thing. You know, if you if you don't want it to uh, distract you, you know, bright, it's quite a bright display. You just close that, and and if you don't if you don't need it, 
and I didn't mean I forgot to mention the uh, the headlight switch. No, it's got it's got parking lights. You know, it's various positions. But to operate the fog lamps, it's on it's on automatic there because I normally leave it in automatic mode. But if you have it like on side lights or or dip beams in neither of those two positions, you can just pull it once for front fogs and pull it out on next notch for for rear fogs and it works in those two positions it doesn't work in the automatic mode or or any of the other modes so that's a that's that's quite handy and i think uh, that's oh brakes as well because uh what it does when you, when you apply the brakes it holds them on for a few seconds and the Citroen had the same feature, which is under like you know, such as for hill clat, you know, for hill starts. So that's a uh, couple of features I want to uh, I want to show you. Uh, nothing about the. Uh, I don't think anything new. I don't think I've missed anything else. So come back to you when I get home. So back at headquarters. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention: we have a traction control button there below the hazard warning switch and it lights it lights up there's a triangle there next to the left indicator so what i'm going to do i'm going to put air in the tyres and uh they did need adjusting did the tyre pressures but should be fine now now something that next thing i'm going to do uh, as you can tell i've got my scanner out so i'm going to scan this car for any fault code see if there's any because there's no warning messages coming up on the display now on the w204 the OBD port is under here next to the uh, bonnet release now I'm a bit fumbling around here so let's look the bonnet release is there and next to it should be the OBD port OBD2 let's have a look it's right next to it just plug plug in the dongle and there we go that tells me it's powered on so, put the key in ignition, need, uh, need the key on, key on engine off. Oops. Uh, so I just turn on the ignition, scan. Do an auto search, see if it picks it picks up. Picks up the VIN. Oh yes, this is looking good. Might be quicker than Volvo, because uh, I find it new with the car the quicker it seems to scan. Yep. <laughs> mm, there we go. So that's, that's looking good. So do a health report. Uh, quick test. No, we won't do a quick test. Has it? Yeah, it got to health report. Switch on ignition. Let's see if it. It's got some interesting features. Sound generation for exhaust. Oh yeah, got some ECM cords. Well, let it do its stuff. I end up skipping, skipping through it all. So it's complete the scanning. I'll create a report, and it's there's quite a lot of fault code fault codes that it's generated. But the thing is, there's, there's no warning lights, there's no warning message. So let's have a look. We'll just go through it. So temperature sensor, upstream of turbocharger. Lots of it runs fine. 
Um, we've got some under voltages, so they were probably when if battery's been run down or disconnected, so stuff like that. You know, it's faults that can be cleared and they won't come back. Yeah. But see, power supply system's too low. These have been triggered. I'll clear them and they won't come back. Um, yeah, stuff like that. But everything seems to be working, so I can't. I can't see um, these fault codes coming back. And let's have a look. And we'll take the instrument close. It says the power supply system's too low. Like I said, it's 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 probably run batteries run down at some point. Um that's that's just but we've got all these uh all these codes. So many, so many. Anyway, we'll go back and we'll clear them all and we'll see what's left. So switch off ignition. Okay. Switch on ignition. And I think we've got rid of them all except for one. So just have a look at that one. Air conditioning. Electric heat booster one has a malfunction. Hmm. Still might come back. Yeah, yeah, it's coming back anyway. I'm not going to worry about that anymore. So I think that's going to be it, it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed looking around me. Nice new to me Mercedes. Uh, so. As ever, thanks for watching, Dalsivy.